Good morning, everyone. As of this making, I'm not sure what part it will be, but it, I thought it would take a couple minutes, but it's well worth going through all of it, so it'll get inserted wherever, maybe a standalone. But that said, let's dive in. Uh, in regard to Daniel's 70 weeks, I want to look at something in particular and on Daniel 9:26 and there and sorry and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and this is what I want to look at and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end war desolations are determined now uh, God Almighty, Yahweh, Jehovah, promised that he would not destroy the earth again with a flood. But that does, we're not exempt from local flooding. And, the, and I made a correlation with Revelation 12 in regard to a local flood. So um, I thought I'd just touch on that. But I'm going to go over... Um, this portion of it of the scripture starting at the beginning um, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon and under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered now I'm finding a connection to um, the, um, Matthew 24 and um, the end times coming on like childbirth. Okay, let's keep going. And we'll look at who that woman might be. Um, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. This is all very cryptic language that's hard to get your mind around, but scripture does actually explain what's going on. And Revelation 12, like uh, Daniel 9, 26, and you know, Daniel 70 weeks, it's like this broad summary of what's going on. And that's why I wanted to go over more of it than the, what the verses we're getting to. Um, and we'll keep going. And his tail through, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, a third part of the stars are Satan's third part of his angels. And there is scripture describing stars as angelic beings, you know. They're not these far away flickering suns a jillion miles away. They're angelic entities as are, you know, the moving planets. Those were disobedient angels. Okay, don't want to transgress too far. But um, just in the green, my writing, Herod knew that Messiah was born and ordered the mass murder of children. Joseph took Mary and infant Jesus to hide in Egypt. Okay, so... Um, you know, more connecting scriptures to what's going on here at Jesus' birth and him wanting to be devoured immediately. Okay, and we'll continue. And she brought forth a man-child, Jesus, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And I would suggest that's the millennial reign of Jesus. Uh, there's real humans, you know, Satan is absent from the scene, but I think there's a fleshly element. We're, cut, you know, being, you know, it's the already, we don't have our glorified bodies um, 
And there are people in the millennial reign that do not have glorified bodies, in my opinion, and that's a whole other study. And we'll keep going. And her child Jesus was caught up unto God and to his throne. That would be Jesus' resurrection. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, which is twelve hundred sixty days, which is approximately forty two months. You know, um, it's close to it, depending lunar or solar. So I'm not going down that road, but there is a little bit of difference. Okay, here's the question. Is this Mary, Jesus' birth mother, or is it symbolic of the 144,000 sealed by God? Let's keep reading and see what else we could find out. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not because was their place found any more in heaven. So Satan gets the boot. And I, you know, at the end of the video, I want to elaborate on these things, but I don't want to break the flow of this now. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the world. Now, I highlighted deceive the world because he's he returns after the millennial and that's his job to deceive the world okay and he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and there's the third of the angels um, you know the the um, uh, stars cast to earth that are in our sky Okay, and we'll continue. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying, Okay, I know it's going to be a poor edit, but I had to stop to sneeze. So, okay, here we go. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of our Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now there's a lot going on. You know, we've had death or Jesus' birth. We've had Herod chasing him. We've had his resurrection. So this really is a big summary of what's going on. And it includes, um, you know, Satan's timeline and the devilish angels. Okay, and let me go on. And I highlighted in this in blue with purpose. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Now this sure reads like the uh, martyrs. And I believe it's in Revelation 4. The martyrs are under the altar. They're waiting and pleading to God. They're not able to participate at that moment and they want to and um, it would be a whole study unto itself whether Gentiles survive the tribulation that would I you know that would be another whole thing to look into but most definitely the hundred and forty four thousand do survive into the millennium they are protected by God. They're marked on their foreheads. Okay, and we'll continue. Therefore rejoice in ye heavens, and ye shall dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you with great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth. He persecuted the woman. And I'm going to suggest the 144,000, which brought forth the man child. The woman is symbolic of the Hebrew people surviving into the millennial, protected by God. And they're 
you know, Jesus came through the Hebrew people. I mean, you know, that's scripture. And he became a man. Okay, and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a times, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. And I highly I highlighted the times, times, and half a times with great purpose um, because, let me explain, um, the woman or the 144,000 are protected for 1260 days, which is roughly 42 months, which is roughly three and a half years. Well, it, if it was 42 months, you know, if you were going to uh, interpret vague language, it would be times, times, times and a half. So I am just throwing it out there, going to make a stab at it. And this goes back to these 430 year waiting periods that I had spoken of earlier in regard to the promise of the land uh, Abraham he waited 430 years the uh, what do you call it the uh, Egyptian um, slavery of the Hebrew people uh, they were not they didn't make their exodus for 430 years so I am just making a stab at it could it be 430, 430 plus 215, there's a 1,070 year time period where she, the 144,000, are nourished and protected from the face of the serpent. Just throwing it out there. I'm not sure if any of that would apply, but just, you know, things come to mind, and I am a respecter of the Holy Spirit. Really don't know how to apply that, but that's what first came to mind. And we shall continue. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. Okay, here's where the local flood comes in. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. See, this is, you know, those 144,000 would be the remnant, maybe. That's the way I'm looking at it at the moment. And which keeps the commandments of God and have testimony of Jesus Christ. And here, and let's look at Daniel 9.26 again. After three score, two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary in the end there shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Now this is 62 weeks. And it's not such a bad idea. You know, if we're dealing with another thousand plus years to get to the 69th week, in the 70th week. Something is going on. And um, it has not been made clear at all from the pulpits. You know, so this is, you know, I, you know, I just feel led of the Holy Spirit to keep looking at these things. So, uh, down on the lower portion of the slide, you know, that's where I'm getting this. Um, 1,075 years. Is there a thousand years um, accounted by God that we don't, at this stage of the game, we have very poor understanding. 
and history is so wonky. I mean, they call it, they have the best art ever coming out of the Dark Ages. Are you kidding me? You know, things like that. And they really, you know, I, I never learned about the mass of destruction in Rome. I mean, I know they've been excavating ruins. You know, but how do you properly date these things? You know, in my opinion, history has been tampered with in a big way. And maybe a dedicated video, um, you know, I could see how, I mean, they spin a yarn. They, I mean, it just seems like they just make stuff up like the history in Arizona. Don't mean to transgress. But an enormous gold nugget, I consider a gold nugget, rolled out of the word. And we're going to look at Satan's timeline a little bit. Okay, he has access to heaven. And he's cast to earth. He's locked in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. 11, uh, Revelation 19.20 states that outright and this is what kind of blew my socks off and really had me thinking about the sequentialness of revelation is it scrambled a little bit but let me just say satan is released from the bottom of bottomless pit twice in scripture revelation 9 1 and 2 it's during the tribulation and in Re Revelation 27, and this is, look, you know, it reads like it's after Jesus' millennial reign. And then after the millennial reign, it reads like Satan goes into permanent lockdown, you know, back to the bottomless pit. So, how many times is Satan released from the bottomless, bottomless pit? Once or twice. And... When, if it's once, when does it happen? You know, is, uh, what is it, Revelation 9, where the bottomless pit is opened? Is that at the same time as the end of the millennium? I mean, are, it, I'm just going to wonder out loud, are things scrambled? This is... Uh, you know, where have the preachers and teachers been for all these years? I'm just, you know, uh, you know, older woman out in rural Arizona can spot these things and our teachers can't. You know, I am thankful for the Holy Spirit, but, you know, it's just like criminy. You know, there's just a lot to sort through. I don't want to really go off onto a rant because I am thankful to spot this. And if anybody can piece this together, please leave a comment. Okay, see you next time.